Study showed that a staggering 64% of college students who wanted internships were not selected when they applied in 2022. Further studies show that nearly 60% of students are unemployed after completing their engineering degree due to a lack of required skills and experience. Now, we know that trying to get that internship and early career position can be stressful, frustrating, and downright hopeless. We've struggled through the exact same issues and came out the other side. So if you're interested in maximizing your potential and starting your career the right way, sit tight, because we put together blueprints for anyone to get that first engineering position. Welcome to Engineering Insiders. To get you going, we need to introduce you to the three imperative areas of focus that will save you from the perils of the idle application loop. They are sharpening your skills, showcasing your capabilities, and fostering connections. Now, let's get right into it. The first thing you need to do is start developing your skill set, or sharpening your skills. But what skills are you to focus on? CAD? Circuit design? Data manipulation? I mean, come on, there's a whole mess of potential technical skills that companies want from their prospects. Don't worry, the answer to this question is pretty simple. All you need to do to figure out which skills to sharpen is simply go onto a job posting site like LinkedIn or Indeed and search for the job you want. Now you just pick out which ones are the most interesting to you. For example, we see that Raytheon is looking for a schematic creation and circuitry skills, whereas ASML wants someone who has experience with circuits, PCB layout, and lab equipment. At the end of this process, you'll know precisely which skills employers are looking for in your favorite positions. And since you now know which skills to grow, it's time to get sharpening. But how exactly do you go about learning technical skills? We'll show you. Let's say you want to work on your schematic and circuit creation abilities. In order to truly set yourself up for success, you must go above and beyond just taking the relevant classes. Yes, doing extra practice problems and drilling in the theory is useful, but nothing beats hands-on experience. We're talking side projects, joining academic clubs, working with your professors, anything to stand out from the crowd and gain that practical savvy that companies can't turn down. Think about it. Everyone in the application pool has made it past Circuits 101. But how many students design an automatic solar tracker to charge their phone or shatter ceilings as the hardware lead for the university's satellite club? Activities like this boost your skills to an entirely new level and do wonders for your higher ability. But how will the hiring managers know about these new awesome hands-on achievements of yours? This is where our next method comes in. You need to showcase your abilities. And the premier way to do this is with your engineering resume. In short, your resume is a professional snapshot of your academic and practical background. It's best to think of it as a personalized advertisement tailored to a job posting to showcase your relevant and impressive engineering accomplishments and skills. We know that it can be daunting to start from a blank page, so we highly recommend using a pre-made template over starting from scratch. You can find free ones on Microsoft Word and Google Docs or pay for a more professional one. If you want to support the channel and have the funds to do so, check out our template in the description below. But don't worry, we won't blame you for going with a free version. Anyways, it's time to start filling out your resume. The most important things to touch on are the experience, projects, and skills sections. Experience and projects are dedicated to explaining what you did, how you did it, and the resulting impact of your work. The skills section, on the other hand, is basically a recap of your entire professional skill set, so that if the hiring manager only looked at that, they would get a good picture of your fit for the job. Now, as you can see, there are a few ways to translate your experience into resume content. For example, helping a professor set up lab equipment and experiments for a class could fit under experience, projects, and or skills, depending what other content you have in those sections, document spacing, and personal preference. To get you started on writing your experience and projects, our earlier note of what, how, and impact is easily the most important takeaway. For example, instead of noting that you developed a robot for industrial applications, you should instead write optimized a robotic arms kinematics for industrial automation using robot operating system algorithms, reducing production cycle time by 15%. This revised version uses an action verb, notes the technical skills you applied, and highlights the results from your work. On the other hand, the skills portion simply highlights your most relevant skills in four to six bullet points. Another really important note is to match the diction in your skills to the same keywords in the job posting, if applicable, which completes our short intro to engineering resumes. For a deeper discussion on hacks and how-tos, make sure to subscribe and check out our head engineers channel for more. But your resume isn't the only way to showcase your skills and state your intent. Cover letters and online portfolios are a great way to further set yourself apart from the crowd and leave a lasting impact on the hiring manager. 
For example, your resume might excel at explaining your technical qualifications but lack in defining your cultural fit, unique drive, or anything else that didn't fit on the one-page resume. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Make sure your resume is never longer than a single page. This is where your cover letter and portfolio can pick up the slack. The cover letter is a formal extension of the resume and is usually addressed to a certain individual, like the hiring manager, if you know their information. Besides highlighting your most relevant and impressive experience, you want to explain why you are a phenomenal fit for the job and why you want this job specifically. Similarly, an online portfolio is a far underrated method for distancing yourself from the other applicants and landing that job interview. I mean, think about it. You're able to add pictures that show, rather than explaining, how impressive your design is. Most students will stop their application process after the resume, which can be fine if you're mass applying, but won't give you the boost that you might need for that competitive position that you've been dreaming about. And now that you know that, you've successfully sharpened your blossoming engineering skills and showcased them to the highest degree. There's only one thing left to ensure you're maximizing your potential, fostering connections. To do this, you need to start on the best site for online networking, LinkedIn. Once you're there, search the company and role you're applying for, Apple Hardware Engineer, for example. Under the people results, you'll see all sorts of Apple Hardware Engineers that have effectively achieved what you are attempting to. From here, you simply message them something along the lines of, Hello, name, I am, your name, and I am a, your major, student that is very interested in becoming a role at company. I love to know what it takes to be successful at the company and would be very grateful if you could spare a few moments to share your experience. We also recommend sending these messages out to a number of alumni from your school that also work at the company by searching the company name and sorting by people and school. If you message a good 40 to 60 people, you're likely to hear back from a few at least, allowing you to gather precious insight into the company, job, and sometimes end up with a insider recommendation. As you continue reiterating through this process, you will quickly become a natural and find yourself with a number of job interviews. But how do you prepare for these interviews? What should you expect from entering them? That information will be in the next video. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Want to hear our head engineer's take on all this information? Check it out here. Thanks for watching and happy engineering, everybody.